Hello everyone, Jay Cottrell here with EXP Realty here in the Tri-Cities and welcome to our my monthly market update. That's right, it is me. You don't see Josh here with me. For those of you that are new to these, um, my monthly market updates are usually with myself and Josh Pruitt with Sierra Pacific Mortgage, so he can kind of give you the update on the mortgage side. But with work, kids schedules, school activities, and all that stuff, we decided that it would be easier to do a combined quarterly one, uh, which leaves me to do the months in between just uh, by myself, which I'm perfectly fine with. That's really no big deal, but um, I hope you all enjoy it because sometimes I um, feel like you might like him more than me. I don't know, but anyways. <laughs> so what we are looking at is how the month of August closed out and maybe giving you a little bit of insight as to where things are going to go here in the future. And also uh, I get to showcase a new piece of technology that uh, we got here in the, in the area, us realtors, which I'm pretty excited about. I don't know if you're as excited about it as I am, but I mean, I am. So <laughs> you'll get to, you'll get to see that here in a little bit. But first, let me get you started with some of the national data. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, first things first, mortgage rates, because that's what's what every, what's on everybody's mind, which is very interesting, because as long as I've been in real estate, other than the last three years, mortgage rates were never a very um, big consideration in home buying and selling. What I mean by that is, if you look at this graphic um, that I'm about to put up with mortgage rates, you can see that we are pretty much approaching the 52 year average mortgage rate. So you can see about two decades ago, the mortgage rates started dropping, which is what most of us experienced. So we've been used to mortgage rates going down, maybe temporarily going up. But over the last 20, 20 years, last two decades, we got used to mortgage rates dropping, not going up. So the rapid appreciation of the mortgage rate over the past years, I think is what has it in people's top, um, top of mind. Not only that, but the Fed rate, um, the constant news cycles about what's the Fed gonna do with interest rates also has it in people's top of mind as well. But uh, what I mean by not having been a consideration in many people's minds is you didn't really care what mortgage rates were. Uh, the only thing you did is you, you did shop around to a couple different banks and mortgages companies to see which, uh, or mortgage companies, if I could talk, um, to see maybe who had the better rate, but they were all pretty close. Overall, the rate wasn't as important to you as just finding out how much you could afford, what that monthly payment was going to be, and then uh, me and you going out and looking for homes that fit that budget to find what you would like. Well, now lots of people are locked into super low mortgage rates. I think it's somewhere around 70% of the mortgages in the country um, are at three and a half percent or below or between three and 5%. I can't remember exactly how that uh, shakes out, but I'll put, I'll put the actual numbers here in the comments below. But that's a large chunk of the mortgages that are sitting at more than half of the current mortgage rate. So that is um, causing people to pause that might normally be looking to sell their house and buy another right now because they have that super historic low mortgage rate and they're not as willing to give it up for the current mortgage pricing, which is one of the reasons why you'll see that the number of um, listings going up for sale right now is also below where it should be. So let's go ahead and take a look at the next graph. So all of the experts started out the year predicting doom and gloom this, this year for the housing market, that prices were gonna drop, we were gonna see um, <clears throat> a drastic um, reduction in prices all across the country, which is gonna um, put people in some really bad situations. Well, none of that happened. We did see a deceleration in home price appreciation, but we did not see uh, home price depreciation. And here's the case in point. So if we look at the change in home prices, you can see this is the, the Case-Shiller Index, um, just, just, just below 1%. 
um, is where they're predicting right now, but you can see the month over month changes. None of those are negative numbers. And if you look at the local data, which I'll show you here in a little bit, we never saw any home price depreciation. So this is where it, it, it's better for you to listen to, to locals like myself and other realtors than look at the national news headlines and the so-called experts because prices did not depreciate this year. Well, in most markets, there were some areas where they did. And um, you can just see here's kind of here's kind of Case Shiller's um, composite index of um, home value. So that year over year home value increase is due to the fact that the number of listings are down in every category. Now these three graphs compare um, the current year to the previous three normal years, which they're, they're putting as 2017, 18 and 19. You can see the number of new listings, the number of active listings and the number of total listings. Now total listings is the number of new listings, active listings and pending or under contract listings combined. So you can see all of those numbers together point to fewer listings on the market for sale, under contract, sold and coming on the market as well below what would be a normal year. So when there's fewer inventory, so while there are fewer buyers out looking, there's still more buyers than there are homes for sale. That is what is continue, that is what continues to drive home price appreciation, both nationally and in our local market. If you look at year over year inventory levels, again, this is uh, total inventory. You can see why at the beginning of the year, experts were starting to predict doom and gloom. Inventory levels were, were, were um, up and were increasing. But then we saw that slight dip, and we're not talking a huge dip, but just a slight percentage point uh, or so dip in mortgage rates and buyers came out of the woodwork and it was a very robust spring and summer selling season which just dropped our inventory levels way back down again into the red. And because of people that had already locked in those low, low mortgage rates, <coughs> they were not listing their homes to sell. So not only did we sell everything that was currently on the market, but we're not putting anything new that we are, but we're not putting what we need to on the market for sale for buyers to purchase. So we're having consistent inventory shortages. So now let's go ahead and transition um, to our local information, shall we? And I'll give you a, a, a picture of what our current local market looks like so far year to date, um, and maybe give you some predictions on what the future holds. Um, although if one thing has, if I've learned anything over the last three years is nobody can really predict what's gonna happen in this local market. But for that, we're gonna change views so that I can show you the new tool. All right, so let's take a look at um, average percent of list price. And that's where I'm gonna start with our local market. So this is local data from the MLS. Um, this is not exact monthly data. What I mean by that is we're looking at rolling 12 month averages over this 10 year period. Uh, I like that simply because it gives us a better idea of trends and smooths out the line versus if we just look at each month's data point, um, you can see it gets a little, it gets a little crazy, um, but we can still see the overall trajectory is up. So let me go back to rolling 12 months averages. So one of the things you can see <clears throat> is, oops, we're on the average percent of list price. Let's go back to sales prices. So average sales price, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, so you can see where the trajectory of sales prices have been in our area. And it's the same whether we look at average price or median sales price. It, it's, it's, it's just been a continued upward direction. And you can see it's been upward for the last decade, all the way back to 2013, where it was sitting at 145000 versus where we are in August at 288000 which is up 7.4% from the previous year's 12 month average. This is one of the reasons why I say it's not likely that home prices are going to drop in our area. And even if they do, we have had such a rapid appreciation that they're still going to be up. And here's what I mean by that. So if you look at 
2013 to 2018, the first half of this decade, <clears throat> there was a 12% um, increase in the average sales price. So roughly a 12% increase in home values in our area. From 2018 to January of 2023, it went from 163 to 279,000, which represents a 71% increase. So the first half of the decade, there was a 12% increase in average sales price. The second half of this decade, there's been over a 71% increase in sales prices in our area. So if we just average it out and say, let's forget what happened in 2020, and let's just say the slope of that line stayed consistent all the way through um, to current, which would mean basically um, the first half experienced a 12%, the second half experienced a 12% increase in home values. That would put our average sales price at around 182 to 183,000, uh, which some would say, yeah, that's what I think homes should be valued in our area. But here's why you don't want to see home values go back down to that that would represent a 35% decrease in home values over where they currently sit. Actually, more than that, because that's based on January. We're sitting almost $10,000 more than that now. So 36, 37, 38% decrease in home values. Nobody wants that. That would be absolutely devastating for our area and region. Nobody wants that. But even a moderate decrease, let's just say next year, uh, we the experts are wrong and we see like a 5% reduction in sales prices um, next year. That's still going to leave us at over 70% increase um, over those five years, six years. So maybe it goes on a 65% increase in home value. So we don't want to go all the way back down to that nominal price increase because that would represent a huge devastation to our local economy. And what I keep telling my clients is, don't expect anything like that to happen. The floor has moved up. We experienced almost three decades of home price appreciation in five years um, <clears throat> in our area. And so while prices may decrease, they're never going to go back down to that level. They have simply moved up too high. The floor has moved up as well. Everything has moved up and we're not going back down to there, barring some absolute major economic catastrophe help it happening not just nationwide but probably worldwide so if you hear continue to hear people say well i'm just waiting for prices to go back down they're not tell them they need to quit waiting uh, not only are our home prices going back down but mortgage prices aren't going back down to those sub three percent mortgages either they're going to be back probably to more of the anywhere from five to eight percent and bouncing around in between there so if they're waiting on a mortgage if they're waiting on home prices they're going to be waiting probably for the rest of their lives. So, and here's the thing, let's just say, well, home prices are what they are, but I want to see mortgage prices drop back down. Well, what do you think is going to happen to every, everybody else that's sitting and waiting on mortgage rates to go back down? We're going to experience another buyer frenzy if mortgage rates drop back down to 6% or 5%, which is going to put further downward pressure on our inventory levels, which is going to put drastic upward pressure on home prices again. And we'll see a return to bidding wars and twenty dollars and $30,000 over asking price. Um, so the best time to buy a home is now. Actually, sorry. I like this quote better. Um, I heard this somebody say this, and it's absolutely true. The best time to buy a home was yesterday. The next best time to buy a home is today. The worst time to buy a home is tomorrow. Because here's that. If you buy a home at today's current prices and you're buying within what you can afford mortgage rise, if rates go back down, simply refinance, and now you're gonna have a much lower monthly payment, but you'll already have the house that you want. So that's a better money saving tip than trying to wait on rates and home prices to go down, which is not likely. Anyways, off rant off. So why do home prices continue to move up in our region? Well, there's a few re there's a few for that. So the number of new listings. This is the number of new listings coming on the market. Again, this is a rolling 12 month average. You can see throughout most of this time period, at the beginning of the decade, it rapidly 
Um, we experienced a rapid increase, and after, but for the most part, it has remained fairly steady, except for what March of 2020 when the pandemic hit. People took their homes off the market. Nothing was selling. Nobody knew what was going on. So that was, you know, we all know what happened there. But then it kind of came back up. It rebounded a bit. Now you can see it is going back down, even below the dip that we saw um, as a result of the pandemic. And again, that's because people are sitting on those low, low mortgage rates, and they're just not wanting to move. Even people that would normally be moving now, whether moving to a different area, moving to a different home, different neighborhood, uh, moving up, they don't want to because they've got that low rate and um, they have got that low mortgage. Again, they got that low mortgage rate and they don't want to trade it for a higher mortgage rate and a higher priced house, which is completely understandable. But what I'm the reason I mentioned that is because it's still putting pressure on our local housing inventory. Now, there has been a little bit, uh, if we pull up the monthly data, um, you can see that there has been a slight uptick. It's kind of bounced up one month, back down another month, which is not unusual throughout history. And there's also the um, seasonal um, changes. You can see, you know, here in January, the peak is usually in December or, Jan or the, not the peak, but the valley. Um, is usually in December or January when people just don't want to list homes because it's the holidays. So obviously the number of listed coming on the market drops during those time periods, but then it usually rebounds back up. But you can see even this rebound has been lower than the previous two years. And we're getting ready to approach the next dip. So it's really hard to say, but I, I don't think that's going to make, I don't think there's going to be a huge difference. Now I will say if mortgage rates drop significantly, there a little bit of, good news would be not only will that, I mean, the bad news is it's going to bring a lot more buyers out on the market, but it'll also bring a lot more listings on the market because some people that have been wanting to move um, will feel like it's okay price-wise for them to move. And I, I mentioned um, that number of, of mortgages and I found that slide and I wanted to show it to you. So if you look at the number of mortgage rates that are less than 4%, 70, almost 71% of mortgage rates are less than 4%. And the vast, so 3% to 4% is 45% of mortgages. 26% are less than 3%. So you can see that's a pretty big number right there of people that are sitting on these low rates when the current mortgages are way over here at 7, 7.5%. All right, back to our other data. <clears throat> so not only is the number of new listings coming on the market for sale below where it has been for the last many, many years, also the number of homes total for sale. So if you look at this, you can see really since about 2015, um, which ironically is when I started in real estate, um, there has been a steady, steady drop in homes for sale in our region. So we also know what happened during that time frame is post 2008, um, lots of builders went out of business. Home building just kind of grinded to a halt. It started slowly coming back, but that pace of new, of new construction hitting the market um, that we were used to stopped. So that's when you started to see the number of homes for sale drop. And then of course the pandemic hit, everybody started moving to our area and it dropped to a low of about 1,042, 1,037, sorry. And we have just now climbed up to 1,300. So yes, we have seen the inventory in our area um, on an upswing this year. However, it has not made that much of an appreciable difference because look at this compared to all the way back here where we're at 5,400 and that was this was around 14 months of inventory, I believe, when I started. Um, right around here is where we were about a balanced market, and then we're way down here. Now, sales have slowed down enough that we don't need to be in this four to 5,000 range um, of, of listings for sale to be a balanced market. We need to be somewhere in the three to 4,000, but that still represents double or triple what our current inventory level is. So as a result of that low inventory, as a result of fewer listings, fewer homes being put on the market for sale, we have seen the pending sales drop, 
which you can see pending sales have been increasing, increasing, increasing all the way up until December of 2021. And then when the, the frenzy started um, and inventory started getting real low, so you can see when pending sales started to drop off, it was the same time that new listings started to drop off. And also closed sales started to drop off. So you can see here's the number of pending listings. It has continued to drop. If you look on a monthly basis, um, it's still the same, which has resulted in the number of homes sold dropping off as well. <clears throat> so you can see August of last year. There were about 9,600 sales. Um, that's the rolling 12 month average of 9,600. I'll look at a monthly basis. That would probably make more sense for here. There were 824 homes sold last August. Whereas this August, there were 725. Um, <clears throat> so fewer homes selling because fewer homes are putting, being put on the market for sale. So even though we have that slight uptake in inventory levels, the real throttle on our local market is the number of homes, the number of new listings hitting the market. So not enough people are selling their homes, which is resulting in fewer homes being sold. Makes sense, right? Uh, if you want to look at the percentage of list price, you can see that on average right now, homes are selling at 97% of their list price. <clears throat> and it looks like that's flattening out. So again, still homes are selling pretty close to what the asking price, because again, we do have limited inventory, which is limited options for buyers. And while there are fewer buyers out looking, there, which actually I'm not so sure last month, I think we probably had a peak in buyers coming out and look again, but still overall, probably fewer buyers than the 2020 and 2021 out looking. Um, but still more buyers than there are homes to purchase or the whole, <laughs> maybe I should say, um, more buyers than there are homes that buyers want to purchase. That's probably a more correct way to say it. Okay, so there you have it. A look at August data in our local market, comparing it to national data and kind of giving you a prediction of what's going on in the future. So basically the throttle for our market right now, locally and nationally, are mortgage rates and new listings. So we need more people to sell their homes and we need the mortgage rates to go down if we want to see more sales happen, um, which I know um, a lot of us agents definitely want to see more sales happen, but um <clears throat> the good news is if you're a seller right now you can sell your home as long as it's in good condition and there's not much to do what i mean by that is while there are fewer buyers out looking the buyers are picky they want move-in ready they're having to pay a high mortgage rate and a high price for the homes that are on the market they don't want to have to put any money into them after moving in so you are seeing homes actually come um uh, are seeing buyers um, get out of contracts due to inspections and other things that they find because they just simply don't have the money to put it home. They're putting all of their money into the down payment and the purchase price, and they don't have anything left over to fix anything on the house. So that's why you need to talk to a local agent that can talk to you about maybe getting a pre-home inspection so that we can tackle all of these issues before, that we, before we even list your house so that when buyers do come to look at it, they can be assured that everything that should be taken care of has been taken care of on the house. They can move in and there shouldn't be any, there's no known issues with the house. But anyways, that's a tip, to, that's just a, a quick tip for you. So if you wanna find out where we go, please like and subscribe to these videos so that you can find out what's going on here in our local market and on a weekly basis, but also on a monthly basis. And again, YouTube keeps telling me that over half of the viewers of these videos are watching them all the way through, but are not subscribed to my YouTube channel. So if you're watching on YouTube, please go ahead, not just hit the like button for the video, but also hit the subscribe button and subscribe to my channel. 
that would help me out tremendously. Please also share these videos with your families and friends and on your social media um, so that my name can get out there because I would love to be a resource for people, even if you're not looking to buy or sell a house currently, just to be a resource uh, for information on our local market. And if you are looking to buy or sell a home, I would love to sit down and meet with you and see if we would be a good fit for working with each other and give you my best advice on how to get your home sold, or if you're looking to purchase, my best advice on how to prepare to purchase in this current market. So again, I'm Jay Cottrell with eXp Realty here in the Tri-Cities area. That's it for this video. We'll see you again next month.